what reason you have for enjoying our lakes, whether it's recreational or a source of business or just a way to kick back and relax, everybody loves the lakes and everyone wants to do what they can to protect them. My name is John Balanoff. I'm the executive director of the Acton Wakefield Watersheds Alliance, and we've been collaborating with the main lakes to help educate homeowners on how to install best management practices on their property to help protect the lake. Best management practices, or BMPs as we call them, are landscaping methods that we use to prevent stormwater from eroding our shorelines and getting into the lake. Erosion not only brings sediment into the lake, which is bad for aquatic animals and ecosystems, it also brings extra nutrients into the lake, such as phosphorus and nitrogen, that can contribute to the creation of algae blooms and cyanobacteria blooms that can further degrade the lake and in some cases cause harm to humans and animals as well. For this particular project, the homeowner reached out to us because they were having severe uh, bank erosion right on the lake. Uh, so they have a very steep slope down to the water right next to the road. Uh, so it's very easy for erosion to occur in that area due to wave action and also due to stormwater runoff coming from the road. As a result, a lot of the vegetation had died away and the sediment is just freely eroding down into the lake. Uh, so what they need us to do is help revegetate the shoreline with a vegetated buffer to stabilize those soils. Essentially, plants and their root systems are what hold soil in place, especially on steep slopes and especially near the lake. So keeping uh, the shoreline as vegetated as possible with native vegetation is how we prevent the shoreline from eroding down into the lake and causing that non-point source pollution. Today the crew is going to be planting uh, woody native vegetation that's tolerant to the full sun conditions of this site to lock all that soil into place. And for the site, it's important to uh, determine the soil type and also how much sun the site is getting. Certain plants are very sun tolerant, and some are very shade tolerant or sun intolerant. So you want to think about native species that thrive uh, with the amount of sun that the area is getting, and also if the soils are more loamy or more sandy or more clay, uh, those are factors that are gonna Im impact what type of plants you put down in the area. When you're planting plants, the first thing to do is to consider leaving as much of the existing vegetation as possible. There's really no point in removing plants to add more. So we leave the plants that are around and then you dig a hole. Uh, that the, the hole itself for a plant needs to be the depth of the root ball and then twice the width of the root ball to give you space to add some, uh, some amendment soil, some extra compost and nutrient rich soil so that that plant has a good jump start uh, when it first gets planted. And then you get the plant in, you fill the soil and dirt back in with it and you need to water very heavily. Each plant should be watered for at least a minute. It's really actually impossible to overwater a new plant to avoid a transplant shock of it getting into the ground. An ideal vegetated buffer has multiple layers to it, so you've got your ground cover down at the bottom, a bush or shrub layer around knee height, and then a canopy layer with head height plants or trees. The next step in installing a vegetated buffer is to mulch the project area, and we're using a specific kind of mulch called erosion control mulch. Uh, this is different than regular bark mulch uh, because it's made of larger material like stump grindings, a combination of large and small fibrous material that'll stay in place and hold up to storm water when water runs over it uh, and it'll protect the soil underneath. So the plants haven't had time to establish themselves yet since they've just been planted so those root systems aren't holding soil in place yet. So mulching the area with thick mulch that's going to hold up to that storm water is going to keep further erosion from occurring while those plants have time to get established. With increases in development and recreation around our lakes, as well as a general increase in the amount of storm events we've been seeing, there's really never been a better time to do what you can to make your shoreline more resilient. Installing BMPs such as these is a very simple solution for homeowners to install on their own to do what they can to protect the lake. So please consider doing something like this on your shoreline where it's applicable. For more information about how to install BMPs on your own or what resources are available to you, please reach out to the main lakes at their website, lakes.me, or you can contact me at the Acton Wakefield Watersheds Alliance through our website at awwatersheds.org for more information. We're happy to tell you what you can do to help protect the lake.